Eric Clifford Drysdale. I spoke with Cliff about his election in Melbourne, Australia this past January, and I asked who would be his presenter. With no hesitation and that very proud look of a father, he immediately said, my son Greg. I'm pleased to welcome to the podium that great son, Greg Drysdale. Thanks, everybody. That's very nice. Um, my father, in my humble opinion, is the best man I've ever met in all the ways that matter. He taught me everything that I know that's worth knowing. He's a great dad. I I'm very lucky. Um, but I have had to share him. He's given his whole life to tennis, unreservedly, playing, promoting, organizing, uh, and eventually broadcasting. 34 years he's been on TV. 34 years? Johnny Carson wasn't on TV for 34 years. That's a very long time. Um, uh, and still going, by the way. Uh, where were you last week, Cliffy? Fourth uh, of July, we could have been on the golf course, but no. Had to go to England again. <clears throat> uh, I was so happy when I heard that my father was being inducted into the International Hall of Fame because I think that's the most magnificent way for all the great people in tennis that means so much to him. Um, I think that's a way for them to express um, uh, appreciation and affection for my dad for a lifetime spent on these courts. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you all very much. Um, because personally, there's no possible way that I could ever thank my father for all that he means to me. Um, but I can try. <clears throat> Thanks, Dad, for all that you've done and all that you are. I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Cliff Drysdale. I just knew that I was not going to bowl like a baby. And I'm going to try my damnedest not to. Greg, I hope that one day you will realize just how strong a human being and how strong a personality you are. To my wife, Diana, I, I, she thinks this is all about history. And it's not. It's about what's been past and what is going to come in the future. Just one quick thought for you, Deanna, and that is that these last years that we have been together, I've seen the world in a different light. I now see... <laughs> it's not just from the courts to the hotel anymore. It's a much happier place than I ever thought it was before I met you, and I thank you for that. Um, I want to bring you to this spot that I'm standing right now because I will never forget the time that Jimmy Van Allen, who was responsible for the tie break and was responsible, he tried so many times to change the scoring system in tennis and succeeded obviously. But I had figured out a way to subvert his system and so I was playing against some chump here on this court and I figured out that if I lost a couple of points, maybe even a game, that somehow I would be able to get to the semi-finals automatically. And, Poor um, Jimmy came onto this court and he was livid. I mean, he, his fa I thought he was going to explode. The man that I was playing against was Butch Buckholz. He's sitting here up here on this, uh, on this stadium set up here. And I want to apologize to Jimmy Van Allen. And I want to apologize to you for that moment, Butchie. But I'll tell you the truth. You, to me are like a bad rash. I can't get rid of you. <laughs> I mean, it started with the handsome eight, then it goes to world team tennis, then you run the ATP, and then, I don't know, then you start the, the, the Lipton became Sony down in Miami, and then just when I thought I was rid of you, you give me a call and say, would you come down here and start, a, you know, managing this tennis club down here at the Ritz, and 
So I end up in the same city with you and I have to continue to deal with you. That was my opportunity which to meet Don Henderson and between us, we've, he's here as well, Donnie is here somewhere right there in the front row, wife Katie, the, we've started this fine little business that continues to thrive and I wanted you to, to know how much I appreciate you as a good friend. There's another person here, a couple of others that I want to recognize, Gavin Forbes is here as well. Put up your hand, Gavin. His dad was my Davis Cup partner for South Africa back there in the 60s. He wrote a beautiful book, and if anybody in this stadium has not read it, they need to get a copy of it. It's called A Handful of Summers, and it was about those summers in the 60s when times, as you said, Eon, uh, were different, were different and were maybe more fun. Depends on how you look at it, but they were certainly different. This is something that you should read. Anyway, what you don't know, you know that he wrote the book, Gavin. What you don't know is that he said to me at a certain time, Cliff, you are going to be, you're that good that you're going to be able to play with the likes of Rod Laver. And I looked at him and thought he was crazy, but it turned out that way, Rocket. We played a few times against each other. Um, I didn't lose every one of them, just you, you may or may not recall. Um, and there have been so many stories spoken about and written about you that I'm not going to go into them, but I will tell you this, that, that in Rome, the second week I was ever in Europe, you were playing a match and suddenly every, the, uh, the entire uh, locker room, men's locker room, was devoid of people. And the reason for that was because they were all there to go and watch you play. You actually had a topspin backhand, which was basically unknown at that time. Sorry about the rain, folks. Uh, please feel free to put your umbrellas <coughs> up. One of those who uh, would leave the ro locker room always to go and watch the rocket play was Charlie Passarell. And I just want to say about Charlie that he is a dreamer. He always was a dreamer. And when I used to listen to him in those days, Charlie, when we talked about the ATP and forming the ATP, um, you came up with some cockamamie ideas in those days. I used to think you were nuts. The fact is, though, that those ideas have translated into your great tournament that you created at Indian Wells, number one, and the Super 9, what was the Super 9, and then became the uh, Masters 1000 now. Those were your ideas. Don't let anybody in this room forget it. I wish Lamar Hunt was here, Al Hill Jr., because they gave me the opportunity to take my, to bring my family over to the United States and to be honest with you, to be very honest with you, I wanted to be in America more than, than anything from the time that I was knee high to a grasshopper, I wanted to be in this country. They helped that process. Um, <coughs> which meant that I could bring my young kids, one of whom is sitting here now, and, and, and his sister, Kirsty, who is another light of my life, not able to be here, unfortunately, but she is in, in Texas, and she's watching us, and I want her to know how much I appreciate and love her. The other thing that uh, they did for me at WCT was they introduced me to this company called Entertainment and Sports Programming Network now better known as ESPN. And my career with ESPN lasted a lot longer than my playing days, and I just want to recognize a couple of guys. Jeff Mason is here. Uh, he's been the longest, uh, the longest guy that I've known. He's made the trip down here. Jed Drake, who's, who's the type A personality beyond belief, but we've learned so much, at least I have anyway, from Jed. <coughs> We've got Jamie. Reynolds, who tries to keep us announcers on an even keel, which is very difficult because we're all basically egomaniacs. We've got Caroline Davis, who really runs the whole show. Everybody thinks that, that it's the, the suits that run it. It's, it's Jason who does, in fact. Uh, oh, I should say it's Caroline. In fact, Jason is the one who buys all the properties. Jason Bernstein, he's also here. Thank you so much, guys, for, for the honor and privilege of joining me for this really special occasion. The announcing family that we have are also here. Patrick McEnroe is taking the trip with, with his family up here. Chris McHenry is here. Chris Fowler is here as well. It means a lot to me that you guys have shown up here. It means a heck of a lot. Pammy Shriver is like my sister, so I don't even need to thank her because that's, we came to that conclusion a few years ago. I want to recognize just one other person before I stop and maybe try to help everybody get out of the rain, and that is Bobby Feller. 
Bobby Feller has been a producer for tennis for as long as I can remember. We've done a lot of things together over the years, Bobby. He claims that he knows what I'm going to say before I say it. And I will tell you, Bobby, and you're sitting in this group here in front of us as well, I know. I will tell you that I know what you are going to think before you think it, sir. So it's not just a one-sided street here. Finally, I want to recognize... Mr. Chris Clauser, he has had to sit here for what I hope was not more than five minutes because that was uh, my admission that that's as long as I had. If, if he has listened for five minutes, that's four minutes and 30 seconds longer than he's ever had to listen to me before because he has got the attention span of a mosquito. <laughs> I really appreciate his help over the years and his deep and abiding friendship. It is a privilege and an honor to be a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. On behalf of the Board of Directors and Executive Committee, it is my honor to present this certificate to you certifying your induction into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Cliff Drysdale.